Hi, and welcome back to another video on electronic science. Today we're going to be taking a look at my not one way, but two way traffic light system that I've created over the course of a month. So stay tuned for our two way traffic light system on electronic science. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on electronic science. So today we're going to be taking a look at this two-way traffic light system. Now if you look back at my first video when we made a traffic light system with the Raspberry Pi, which is what we're going to be using today to control the system, you saw that I used this breadboard over here, but I had the LEDs physically plugged into the breadboard. Well this time everything is, yes, being powered on a breadboard. All the resistors, wires, and GPIO pins are all being powered off the breadboard. But the traffic light themselves is actually being taken off the breadboard from a wire and plugged into a piece of uh, construction paper and then I poked the LEDs through to give the traffic light looking illusion. And this time I made it two ways so it'll stop traffic going this way and this way. And this way has the right of way. Uh, this road would have the right of way so this one would be green first and theoretically this one would be red first, but unfortunately the way the script works is this one starts off as red, but you get that concept. So yeah, this way has the right of way, so you'll see why I built it that way. And then the our way we're gonna be controlling the Raspberry Pi is again, remotely from my laptop over here because I don't have an external monitor to hook everything up to. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. So let me pull up the script here. All right, everyone, so I have it pulled up. Let's go get a real quick close-up on how I wrote the script, and I'll explain it a little bit in depth. Alrighty then, everyone. So the way this script works is it's very simple. It's basically just a repeat of the last script of the single-way traffic light system with importing GPIO0 as LED and importing time and uh, importing all the LEDs as their GPIO pins as the assigned. Only the anything under while true is where everything really got different. So over here, it's basically print green on and red two on. So red number two is this traffic light right here. So any LED that has number two next to it is this traffic light system. And L any LED with no number next to it is this one. Because in the script, you can't just use the same name or else it'll turn on the same LED. So you need to change the name in some way, shape, or form. So I just put a number two next to it so that I know and so that the script knows. And then so I wanted it to be able to say things in the command prompt, what LED is on and things like that. So, for example, just say in real life, if you were a traffic light worker and you weren't at the scene where the traffic light is being worked, then you would know what's going on with the traffic light and you wouldn't have to go on scene to see if things are broken. And I also made an emergency script just like the last one, which I'll show you guys in just a second. So green on, so green number one would go on, which is this one, and then... Um, Red 2 is also on. So basically what's going to happen is when I first start the script, the green light's going to be on until it traffic go this way, and the red one is going to stay on until this one turns red, and then that one will go to green. So that's what this whole top part of the script does, basically. And then down here, it'll say red number 2 stay on, and then sleep 1. All these print statements mean nothing for the script. It just basically will say it as it runs. I just did that for extra effect, really. You don't need to do that. Uh, and then green number two is on. So down here is when this red one will stay on, and then this one is allowed to go down to green. And then it'll be yellow, and then red, and then it goes back down to green on this one, and the cycle continues. And then I also put at the very bottom, system is normal, because in the emergency script, which I'll do right here, open it, and that says e2a.py, open it up. Basically what this one does is it's very short in script, which will make this red one blink because this road has the right of way. So this road will need to stop. So the red one will blink and the yellow one will blink, blink here so that the people know to slow down in case someone decides to run the red light over here in case, you know, the traffic light system ever had to turn off for, you know, a weather event or something that went wrong. So that is the script, everybody, and I hope you enjoy. All right, everybody. So here's how everything is going to work. So I obviously have the traffic lights right here and the script right here, but I'm not actually going to run it in Python. I'm going to run it via the command prompt in here. Uh, it doesn't matter where you run it. Um, I just want to run it in here so that it actually shows you the play-by-play. -play. Uh, so first I need a CD into the desktop and then into my Python folder. So stand by for that. Alrighty then, everybody. So here we go. Ready? 
three, two, one. Okay, so now the traffic light system is on. The green one is on over here first to allow traffic through. I'm gonna put the computer down here um, and step back. The yellow one turns on, red one, and then the red stays on on both of them for one second so that anybody who's running the red light, you know, no head-on collisions happen. Then it goes back down to green, so that this road now is able to go through. Now it's yellow, people need to start to slow down. Red, and then down to green. So that is how the traffic light system works. Now let me show you what it looks like on the computer as the traffic light system is running. Here we go. We got the traffic light system running right here. And then on the computer on the command line, you could see, let me zoom the camera out a little bit. There we go. Just wondering what was going on there. Um, you could see that when things change, so every time it says system is normal, it loops back to the beginning. And so green on, red number two is on as well. And then yellow on. Yellow on, sorry I did that quickly. Red two stay on, and then so now red is on, green number two is on, you can see that it says it in the script. So that's what the whole print thing did in the script. I just wanted to add that for some cool effect basically guys. And then there's the Raspberry Pi, and then here's my ghetto setup over here with all these wires, and believe it or not, every single wire here has a purpose guys. And if you look really down in there, you can see the resistors for the grounds, the LEDs are negative, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, so that they don't blow up or we don't damage the Pi. I went over that in my first video. You can see it goes through the resistors and then it goes into the wire to the LED. And then as you can see, behind the scenes here is all the things getting plugged in to the LEDs and working everything. And then I just drew a makeshift road on a piece of paper to make it you know, seem even more like the real effect. And there it is running on the computer. So I'm gonna zoom it out now and I'm gonna explain a little bit, so yeah. So this traffic light system is very simple. So I basically just took the last system that I had, which was all the LEDs in a line over here and I put those on the breadboard because I originally needed to see if I can get this to work. So I did make everything go externally or everything like that. I physically had the LEDs attached to the breadboard. And then what I did was I made another set of LEDs behind it. And then I obviously, what I did was I actually took my old script for the one-way traffic light system and I just beefed it up and added the control of the second one. Okay, so then what I did was I took their GPIO numbers on the second set of LEDs and I put that into the script and then I made it turn on. And so there were a lot of kinks when I made the script. So originally what I wanted to have happen was I wanted obviously see when this one's green and the road is able to go. I wanted this road to be stopped so that we don't have head-on collisions. But what happened was, is when this one went down to green, this one would also go down to green. I wouldn't get the red locked in. So therefore, both roadways would be green, and that doesn't work properly. So it actually took me a while to work out the kinks in the system. But all in all, after about, you know, a couple nights of working on it, I got it to work. And right here is the computer um, that is controlling the computer over there, the Raspberry Pi, which is the brains of the operation. This basically is just a thing controlling it. So this one's really doing nothing. And yeah, so that's basically what I did. Obviously you need to add the resistors on the negative or a GPIO part of the LED. It doesn't really matter. You just want to limit the current somehow going into those LEDs. And then obviously the Raspberry Pi. And then I have the, basically the exact same setup as yes, or the last time when I ran this big uh, cable over to the GPIO pin extender. It doesn't extend anything. It just basically labels it and puts it all into the breadboard without having to do the painstaking process of finding each pin and connecting it there because then the system becomes a lot more fragile too. And yeah, so I basically just wanted to showcase this. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, traffic light system though. Um, and yeah, I basically had to make some extensions here, plug in two wires and no wires and things like that. That's why it's incredibly janky, <laughs> but it works and I'm very, Proud of it. And um, if you really want to get even more technical, my Raspberry Pi came with a fan. You can see it right here. It's for the top of the case when you actually have it in the case. You can take two other little pins and you can hook it up to the 5 volt output and ground on um, GPIO pins and places on top of the Raspberry Pi if you're working in a hot environment so that your CPU or RAM doesn't heat up too fast. I did that when I was working upstairs, but now that I'm down here in the cold basement, I don't really need to do that because this whole place is cold. So these heat sinks should do a good job of reflecting the heat off of it. So yeah, I basically just wanted to showcase this. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you guys enjoyed, please remember to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel as it helps us out a ton. 
Share this video with your friends and family so that our channel gets spread around and so that we get known for a cool project like this and it also helps me make these projects. And let me know if you have any questions. I didn't really show you guys uh, how you build this. I just really wanted to showcase this project. It's, you know, it'd be a really long video. But if you really want to know, just let me know in the comments and I'll get right back at you. And uh, I also wanted to just let you guys know that videos may become a little less frequent because there's a lot of things going on in the world right now, a lot of uncertainty. And I like to make these videos when I'm home alone. And obviously, since everybody's stuck at home, I don't have a lot of videos pre-recorded anymore. So, uh, you know, I usually try to do a video at least once a week. They might be once every two weeks or they might still be once a week. I'm just not going to do um, a schedule of every Thursday anymore. But anyways, guys, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.